we're back for another video in our A&Q series, and I just wanna thank you for joining us as we keep considering these important questions together. If you've been with us, you know that these topics often take us on a journey. We ask questions, we search for answers, which bring up more questions, and that's what I think we'll find with our topic today. Here's the question. Do good people go to heaven? Now, there's a lot at play in a question like this, isn't there? For starters, it implies that a place called heaven really exists. Historically speaking, this is the place where Christians believe that after death, you experience the fullness of God's presence and you live with him for all eternity. Now, even that, there is so much more uh, to, to that answer and, and all the images and the impressions that you may have of eternity because of some movie you watched or because of what someone told you when you were growing up. Um, let's just save that for another day in another video, okay? But how about for now, if it's real, I mean, if there really is something after this life that you can experience with God, how do people get there? I mean, does everyone show up? I mean, the, the villains and heroes, the, the nice people and the monsters, do we all make it? Is this for everyone? I think most of us deep down can't quite make sense of that option. I mean, if that's the case, where's the meaning of life right now? Where is justice, which means, if that's the case, there is a line being drawn somewhere. So the question is, is it based on our actions? Do, do our good deeds have to outweigh our bad deeds? Do, do we qualify after so many good days in a row? Is, is heaven like some exclusive supernatural country club and our good deeds are the entrance fee? Respectfully, and depending on your church background, I can understand why this may throw you, you may not agree with me here, but the answer to that is no. I know that's what a lot of you have heard. And even this is what we sometimes see in the movies. But honestly, this, this, this first option, even though we're comfortable with it, and I think we are because it leaves us in the driver's seat. You know, it, it's up to me if I do enough. But that's not what the Bible says at all. But I think it's also why even before some of you hear what the Bible says, deep down, this working towards heaven might never have felt like it was right anyway. I wanna be as clear as possible. The Bible plainly states that our good deeds, our works, sometimes they're called, they don't get you into heaven. The Hebrew prophet Isaiah said once that our good deeds, now think of that as these deeds outside of our life with God. So this is us trying to do it on our own. Our good deeds are like filthy rags in his eyes. In other words, even if you take every good thing you've done throughout your life and you stack it up and you place it next to God's holiness, it doesn't compare. I mean, it won't cut it. It's not enough because reaching back to another one of our videos, all of us have sinned. All of us have disobeyed God. So it's not about good deeds or being a good person. So that means none of us qualify on our own, none of us. Which then the question is, now what? Well, let's look at another passage in the Bible. This time we'll look in the New Testament in the book of Ephesians chapter two, where we read, uh, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not, not by works, there it is, so that no one can boast. So we're not saved by our works or our status. No, we are all saved by what? By grace. It's a gift. So if you want to experience this eternity with God, the almighty creator of the universe, you simply accept this gift. See, he already knows how hopeless this is for you but his love simply would not let that be the last word in your life or my life. When you trust that in that moment, that moment when Jesus died on the cross, he somehow took on the weight of your sin, that in that moment, somehow he paid the consequence, the debt of your sin, that's the gift God is offering. It's as if Jesus is saying, let me step in and pay that debt. That's grace. We don't deserve it. 
but that's the offer. And when you recognize your need for him and then you ask him in your own way, with your own words, to forgive you, to restore you, to walk with you, to lead you, this is what opens up a life with God that starts now, but it stretches into forever. So one more time, it's not good people who go to heaven because honestly, none of us are good. I'll be the first to admit that I'm not. I mean, it, it's not good people that get there on their own. It's forgiven people. Forgiven people go to heaven. The ones who have received this grace we're talking about, the, the, the ones who have surrendered our lives to him. And when we do that, Jesus moves in closer than close, like closer than your next breath. You begin to sense his presence. This is hard to explain, but you sense his presence. And that means regardless of your circumstances, he's with you. Now, there are no promises of a trouble-free life here, but no matter what you face, you will not face it alone. Oh, and that sinking sense of this not being enough, that constant wondering if you've ever done enough, now it's replaced with relief, with a sense of gratitude. And now, well, now you start exploring and experiencing that life with God, not just in heaven someday, but here, now, and it stretches into forever. Now, that was a lot, I know, and I'm sure it stirred up a lot more questions. So what do you want to talk about next? Be sure to let our team know in the comments. I hope by now you've subscribed and that'll give me a chance to say that we'll see you next time. So thank you again for asking these questions. Let's keep doing this together.